Happening now, rescue crews are searching for two people missing in Perry County after severe weather struck last night. Kimberly Davis joins us again from one of the hardest hit areas. Kimberly. Two people are dead and others missing in the massive storms that tore through parts of the mid-state last night. Our Kimberly Davis is in Perry County where the search continues this morning for at least two people that are still missing. Kimberly, what can you tell us? Five. Happening now, the cleanup will also continue in Wayne County this morning. Take a look at what used to be the post office in Lutz. It was flattened by a possible tornado Wednesday night. Fortunately, no one was inside the building when the storm came through. All residents will have to pick up their mail at the Collinwood post office until further notice. And we have posted more information to help residents there on our website, newschannel5.com. And if you would like to help the victims of these storms, you can. News Channel 5 is partnering with the Community Foundation to give everyone the opportunity to help. Go to newschannel5.com and look for the link to donate to the storm victims. Ahead of yesterday's storms, TDOT and emergency management officials were doing everything they could to get ready to help mid-state residents. Crews spent the day preparing their equipment to clear trees and other debris. One of the tips Tima shared with us, make sure your holiday guests know where your safe place is. You need to let them know where to go too. They don't know your house probably, so tell them where to go. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the damage reports are widespread. Officials will be out today to help clean up. Now, developing news this morning as officials look for the person responsible for thousands of dollars of damage at a local golf course. Groundskeepers earlier this week found that someone had driven an off-road vehicle through the course in Rutherford County. News Channel 5's Jesse Knutson has more on the vandalism in Murfreesboro. Right now, rescue crews are tearing through the rubble in Perry County, searching for missing people in the aftermath of the storm. Kimberly Davis joins us with the latest from Perry County. Kimberly. Making headlines this morning, two people are dead, and right now, rescue crews are searching for missing people in Perry County. The Perry County Sheriff's Office has not released the identity of those two people just yet, but deputies say a woman and a man were inside a home when it exploded with debris. And the cleanup will also continue in Wayne County this morning. Take a look at what used to be the post office in Lutz. It was flattened by a possible tornado Wednesday night. Fortunately, no one was inside the building when the storm came through. And Tennessee was not the only state affected by severe weather yesterday. At least three people were killed in Mississippi. Officials say this tornado ripped through the northwest part of the state. Two people were killed inside their homes in Benton County, and a seven-year-old boy died in a vehicle near Holly Springs. News and information leader. This is News Channel 5 at 10. Two inmates make a run for it, and one lands at the bottom of a cliff. Rebecca Schleicher joins us with details on the attempted escape in South Nashville. Rebecca? Well, Junkville, with the deputies hot on their heels, the Channel 5. Thank you, Rebecca. A third trial surrounding the Vanderbilt rape case starts Monday. A jury from Memphis will decide whether former football player Brandon Vandenberg raped an unconscious student in the dorm room three years ago. Co-defendant Corey Beatty was found guilty on multiple counts just two months ago. You'll remember both men were found guilty on all counts last year, but the judge declared a mistrial. Of course, we have gavel to gavel coverage starting at 9 Monday morning on News Channel 5 Plus and online at newschannel5.com. Also coming up on Monday, a hearing for Bradley Madden. His father is accused of kidnapping, raping, and murdering seven-year-old Gabby Doolin in Kentucky. Bradley allegedly confessed to posting threatening messages to the Scottsville Police Department Facebook page after his father's arrest. The 20-year-old faces more than 30 counts, including terroristic threatening. The older Madden will be in court next month. And we continue to follow developing news out of southeast Tennessee. This new video shows the aftermath of a crash that killed two people and injured two others. The crash happened as the plane approached the Collegedale Airport. That's about 20 miles east of Chattanooga. No word yet on the cause of this crash. Remembering Blue Angel Captain Jeff Coos. Today he was laid to rest at a cemetery in his native Durango, Colorado. Earlier today, mourners lined the street to show support as the motorcade made its way through his hometown. Captain Coos was killed while practicing for an air show in Smyrna on June 2nd. He leaves behind his wife and two young children. 
News and Information Leader. This is News Channel 5 This Morning. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us here at News Channel 5 this Sunday morning. I'm Jonquil Newland in for Jennifer Krause. We'll have more on some of your top stories in just a few moments, but first let's check in with meteorologist Kelly Cox for a quick look at what your 4th of July weekend weather is going to be like. Well, Jonquil... <laughs> We are officially one day away from one of the biggest 4th of July celebrations across the country. A quarter million people are expected to flood downtown Nashville to be a part of this year's Let Freedom Sing celebration. 7,100 people will be allowed inside us in the amphitheater and 7,300 at the Green at Riverfront Park. Now happening today, Nashville's big 4th of July celebration kicks off later today with free music and family fun all gearing up for tomorrow's show. News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis is downtown Nashville right now with more on what organizers have planned. And Kimberly, tomorrow, the big day, but there's still a lot going on later today. New this morning, police are looking for two men that were inside an SUV when a shootout erupted last night in Robertson County. It happened at 7 p.m. in Springfield at 15th Avenue and Bessie Street. Smokey Barn News reports the victims were in the SUV with two other people when gunfire broke out. Two of the victims showed up at the hospital. One man was shot in the neck, the other in the leg. Several homes nearby were hit by the drive-by, but luckily no one else was hurt. Also new this morning, a strange situation in North Nashville early this morning sent two people to the hospital. All we know right now is that two men were at a business on Brick Church Pike near Ewing Drive when one man shot the victim in the arm and in the head. Then the victim returned fire, hitting the gunman in the head as well. The victim was taken to Skyline with non-life-threatening injuries while the gunman was taken to Vanderbilt with life-threatening injuries. It's not clear what caused the shootout. Four children are dead. Their mother is behind bars. Now all one man wants is to see his son, the only survivor of a brutal attack last week in Memphis. That was Detrail Clayton, the boy's father. The boy's mother, Shanitha Gardner, is accused of stabbing and killing her four children Friday, all under the age of five. Her husband and the children's father, Martin Gardner, says his wife admitted she killed their kids over the phone. Gardner faces multiple charges, including four counts of first degree murder. A bounty hunter is in trouble this morning for shooting his gun in the parking lot of a Springfield Walmart. Smokey Barn News reports Christopher Vickers fired his pistol back on June 18th after a fugitive took off running. Vickers says he tried to shoot the fugitive with a taser first but missed, then shot a blank into the air to see if the fugitive would stop. He later admitted the round was live and the gun somehow went off during the chase. Springfield police charged Vickers with aggravated assault and reckless endangerment. Vickers will not be allowed to work as a bounty hunter or carry a gun until this his case is settled. The investigation continues. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton met with federal investigators for hours yesterday morning to discuss her use of private email server while serving as Secretary of State. Weijia Zhang has more on the meeting from the agency's headquarters in D.C. Prepare for gridlock. If you're planning to drive this 4th of July, AAA says 43 million Americans will be hitting the road this weekend. That's the highest 4th of July travel volume on record. The holiday travel period started Thursday and will end Monday. AAA also says more than 3 million Americans will be flying this weekend. A wildfire in Northern California now covers nearly 3,000 acres. It's near the city of Colinga in Fresno County, about three hours south of San Francisco. Firefighters have only been able to surround 25% of the fire. Hundreds of firefighters are still working 24-hour shifts to get the blaze under control. About a dozen homes are threatened. What caused the fire is still under investigation. Sky 5 HD is the only news helicopter that flies over the mid-state every weekday morning. Our crews capture some amazing pictures every single day. Now here's a look at what they saw last week. Good morning. Good morning, Leland. Thank you so much. In your news, police in Baton Rouge are investigating a deadly officer-involved shooting that is already protests sparking protests. Now, cell phone video of the incident has already gone viral. Now, we warn you, some of what you're about to see may be disturbing to some viewers. 
Back here in the mid-state, there is new information now about the homicide at a Donaldson motel. Metro police have made an arrest and charged 22-year-old Ben Austin Bolton out of Memphis with Tuesday night's murder of a woman at the Lotus Inn on Percy Priest Drive. Police found her body inside a room at the motel last night just after 10 o'clock. She had been stabbed to death. We talked to one man staying a couple rooms down the hall. He says he's a former bounty hunter and would have interviewed intervened rather if he only knew what was happening. UT has agreed to settle a high profile discrimination lawsuit, which will cost the university nearly two and a half million dollars. The suit included several Jane Doe's who alleged they were assaulted by the male athletes and said the school did little to punish the men, creating a culture that allowed that behavior. There were also the independent commission to review the response to sexual assaults at all UT campuses. Although the university is settling, they are not admitting any guilt. For more details and to read the official statement, just head over to newschannel5.com. Good news for drivers in distress along the roads. The Tennessee Department of Transportation is expanding its help program all across the state. Now here in the Nashville area, TDOT will be adding nine help trucks and operators. They're also adding three expansion routes, two from Harding Place exit in Nashville down I-24 towards Murfreesboro, and another will be added on I-65 also in the Harding Place area heading down to Franklin. That's a quick check of your news headlines. We'll have more today at 4 o'clock right now. We'll send it out to Merrill.